Hello everyone, today I thought we'd take a look at using the device current user inside of a action cable channel so that we can have like user sessions, pass back user information, etc. And I also thought we'd take a look at using the action cable channels inside of a stimulus controller because I personally like that workflow a little bit better. So to get started, we're gonna hit F11, say Rails new video. And this shouldn't take us longer than like 10 minutes maybe. Uh, hopefully, assuming I get through all of this. But the basic idea is we have to, uh, first we have to add device, then we have to add a helper method into a uh, uh, file for our like application-wide uh, channel. And from that point, we should be good to use the, the current user. So we'll just say, uh, let's do the, the device stuff. We'll do a bundle add device and and bundle uh, oops and uh, rails g device colon install and rails g device user something like that and then i got to come over to my other window to grab the db seeds file because we're going to be seeding our database we'll say code dot open this up in vs code and hopefully this opens sometime this year. We can then come over here. We can close out of all of the notes and then we can uh, come over here. So in our DB and our seeds.rb, we're just gonna paste this in. This creates three accounts. We really only need one of them. So just maybe create one so you don't have to sign up. And then let's go ahead and let's full screen this again. Let's say Rails G controller pages home, we'll create a home page. Then let's do a Rails G channel. We'll call this, uh, I don't know, like the, the room channel, I guess. Uh, and then we can do a uh, Rails G stimulus room to create a stimulus room controller. I think at this point we're pretty much done. Let's do a Rails DB colon prepare to create our database, migrate it, and hopefully seed it. I don't actually remember. Let's just do a user dot first real quick. It didn't seed it. So we'll do a rails db colon seed command to seed our database. Let's go ahead and let's do a rails s and we can refresh our server here. That worked, let's come over to our config and our routes.rb because we gotta change this from a git to a root and a slash to a hash. And then we're good to go there. We can refresh, takes us to the home page. cool. Let's now come over here and let's set up the stimulus controller first. So let's come into the views, pages, home, and in here, let's do a content tag, oops, content underscore tag for a div with an empty string with some data. And then in here, let's do a controller, which is gonna be the room controller, or was it rooms? I don't remember. Uh, let's check, it was the room controller. Okay, so let's make sure it's singular. Come down here and close this off. There we go. So that gives us our uh, stimulus controller. We can now come over here into our JavaScript controllers, room controller, and do a console.log to say, uh, hello stimulus. Sure, we'll hit control shift I so we can see the terminal. Refresh the page, hello stimulus is printing to the console. So we know that this is now connected to this content tag right here because it's called the room controller. All right. Let's see how we can use action cable with this. To do that, we're gonna come over to our channels uh, and our application channel and our connection.rb. The reason why we're coming in here is because in the connection.rb, uh, we can uh, create the current user stuff. I just have to open up my notes real quick. So for the current user, all we really have to do is say, all right, I want the user to be identified by a method called, uh, or by the uh, current user. And we can come down here, we can create a connect method where we say self.currentUser, which again correlates, is equal to find verified user. For the find verified user, we can create a, uh, actually I think this can be private. I don't think it needs to be protected. We can create a def find verified user. And then you have the option of finding the verified user by a uh, ID in your cookies, just like they're doing here. But GitHub Copilot doesn't always know what's best. There's also a way of doing this by saying if the verified user is equal to env and then warden.user. Uh, and then there's an extra brace there. Uh, bracket, sorry. This allows you to uh, 
grab the current user, store it, or grab the verified user, sorry, store it inside of your current user, and then use this in your action cable channel. So if we come over to our channels and our room channel, we can now use that in here. So we can create like a stream from for the room channel, or I'll cover this too, I guess, extra special bonus. If you want this to be like the uh, room ID, you can do something like this, where you say room underscore, and then you can do params room ID. And then we'll talk about how to access this uh, in a second here. So this is one option. If you want to like specify which room you're, you're streaming from, you can do this. In my case though, I'm just going to do a stream from or the uh, room channel, just like that. Okay. The other thing we want to do is come in here and maybe do a def git underscore, let's say username maybe, or let's say git user uh, data. Let's do that. And then what we'll do is we'll say data is going to be equal to some, uh, some braces. And then we'll say the uh, ID is going to be the current user dot ID. The email is going to be the current user dot email. And then let's do something like the username is equal to the current underscore user dot email dot split at the at symbol and then grab the first or the zeroth element. So we get a username that's like the first half of an email. After we have that, we can then come down here and do a action cable dot server dot broadcast to the room channel, which matches this room channel right here. Of course, you could also set this as like a variable so you don't have a magic string floating around. And then we want to pass the data. Now, if you do run into an error where it tells you that it, it, it was provided one argument but expected two, a quick fix for that sometimes is to throw this into a set of braces, just like this. Uh, oops, and hopefully the formatter figures it out. Uh, and then this fixes the arguments because it's expecting this to come inside of an object like that. But this, this should allow us to pass back this user data. So we can then come into, uh, let's grab our uh, stimulus. Let's come into the JavaScript, the channels, and the room channel. We're going to copy all of this. We're actually going to cut it so that it doesn't run without our permission. Then let's come into the room controller, come down here and do a create uh, action cable uh, channel maybe or something. And then we can paste this in here. We're going to grab the consumer. We're going to hold all and hit the up arrow key to move it to the top here and come down here. And then for this subscription, what we want to do is tab it over. And we want to say that we're going to return the subscription because then we can come into our connect and we can say this dot sub is equal to this dot create action cable channel. And then we can like console log this out. We can console log out this dot sub. And let's come over here and let's refresh. And what we'll see is we get the uh, subscription right here. We can check through all of the information if you're so inclined. But if we look at our uh, terminal here, we should hopefully be getting yelled at, which we are. It's an unauthorized connection attempt was rejected. If we look at our connection.rb, we re recall that there's a reject uh, unauthorized connection. So that's where this is coming from. So basically what this is saying, uh, which this isn't really helpful, uh, but it's not supposed to be because you're not trying to help the people that are doing bad things. But what this essentially means is, hey, hey, dummy, you uh, you forgot to log in. So we do need to actually log in to make this work. So we'll just come into our home page real quick. So uh, was it like pages home, I think. So app views pages home. And then right above the content tag, we'll just paste this in. I'll hit F11. Uh, and so this, let's just do an email. We're going to check if we're uh, if we're logged in. If we are, we show the user their email and have a link to the logout button. If we're not logged in, we have a link to the login path. So let's go ahead and let's refresh. We now have a login button. We can do dean at example.com with a password of password. Hopefully that works. And now if we come over here, we can see that we failed to remove a child on a node. Uh, that's totally not the right error. Um, we can hopefully see uh, that this is uh, somewhat working. So let's come over to our controllers and our room controller again. And let's just take a look at how we can pass back that. Uh, well, I guess let's take a look at how we can get the user data first. So let's come into our connected method and let's call uh, this dot perform. And then let's perform by doing the uh, get user data method. So we'll just put that inside of quotes here. 
then we'll see what happens. So we'll come over here, we'll refresh, and we'll see that hopefully nothing went wrong. So we can see we're broadcasting to the room channel, the data object with an ID of one, an email of dean at example.com, and a username of dean. Then that gets transmitted. So in here, what we have to do now is we have to say when we receive some data, we want to console log out that data. So let's come over here, let's refresh. And now we can see we're receiving this data. So let's expand it. We have our data. And in here we have our data, which has some email and some ID and usernames. So if we grab this data, let's see what we can do with it. It is inside of this weird object. Let's try to do a dot email. Let's come over here, let's refresh. And you can see this isn't defined. Well, the reason why is because we have data that is inside of some data. So if we refresh, you can now see we're getting this dnetexample.com. So ideally in our room channel, what we'd wanna do is not put this inside of a data object, but maybe inside of a user object. And then when we pass the data through, you do something like this. Then we can grab this, we can replace this with a user so that we can hopefully in this controller change this to be a data.user.email. Something like that. Let's come over here, let's refresh. And now we have data.user.email working as expected. Okay, but what if we're like at a different path and we wanna pass in something like the parameter for the room ID? Let's just cover that real quick. To do this, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop the server. I'm gonna do a Rails G, uh, Rails G scaffold for a room and each room is gonna have a name. Go ahead and we'll do a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate our database. And then let's do a Rails S. And then let's come over here to the home page. Let's refresh and let's actually just uh, come to the pages home.html. Let's grab this content tag here for the uh, controller for stimulus. And then let's go over to slash rooms. And then in our room index page, we'll just go ahead and we'll paste this in. Uh, I guess we'll paste it in. Uh, actually, we probably don't want it here. We probably want this on the actual room page, I'd imagine. So let's just put it in here. So if we're on the room page, we're gonna connect to this. So let's come in here, let's create a new, new room. We'll call this general, click create. And now that we're on the general page, you can see that we're getting this data back. But if we come over to a different page, let's say localhost port 3000 slash rooms. Oh, well, let's go to, go to the root first. Let's log in as john at doe.com with a password of password. So if we come over to the rooms page here, we can see that we have John Doe appearing here. Uh, but if we come back and we create a new room, we'll call this one test. And now if we refresh both of these, if we're in the test page, you can see that this one is still getting john at doe.com. So we need to separate this a bit so that it has like the room parameter taken into account. To do that, it's not terribly difficult. All we have to do is come into the uh, JavaScript file for our room controller. And what we wanna do in our room controller is where we have this create for the rooms channel we want to grab this and throw this into an object just like this. So we start by saying the channel here, channel is the room channel. And then after the room channel, we can then pass in the room underscore ID, which will be, uh, we'll say room ID, something like that. And now we have to actually define what that room ID is, which means this has to take in a room ID. And then in our uh, top level here, we can just say let room uh, room ID equal this dot element dot data set room ID. We have to pass this in. So we're gonna grab this uh, thing from the actual element here. So we have to come up to our room dot HTML dot ERB partial. And inside of this specific room, what we wanna do is we want to come in here and after this we want to do a comma and we want to do a room underscore id is equal to the room id we come over here we can refresh you'll see we don't get any errors but if we come over here and we refresh for john but if we come over here and we refresh for john uh oops hopefully this works uh we go to room what is this room one you'll see we're still getting john appearing here because we have to come into our 
uh, room channel. And we have to comment this one out and uh, uncomment this one. So now if we save this, this will take into consideration the param. Now we can see we're streaming from the room with the params of room ID. Uh, so this is a very specific channel here. But what this means is we can hopefully uh, see if uh, someone comes over to like the test. Uh, we'll see some stuff getting streamed here. And if someone comes back to the general room, which is room slash one. So we can see here, I'm refreshing in the general channel. I come back here, I come down to the test channel, I refresh in here, and they are no longer seeing each other. So that's sort of the separation that this gets you with the double parameter setup. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about. It was just a quicker video that hopefully uh, covers some of this stuff because I know it can be a little bit confusing. Um, but this should hopefully get you up and running with your, your user accounts, making it in the stimulus controller and working with the, uh, the parameters limited to each room. So yeah, hopefully this, this, so yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.